So what is going on guys, it's Triple G here back with another Tribes of Midgard video. In today's video we're going to be giving you a full guide into the Survival 2.0 mode which in my opinion is now better than the Saga mode. It offers more challenges and a more variety of gameplay and allows you to create your own super class within Tribes of Midgard. So if you enjoy this video please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week and otherwise let's get straight into this video. So there are some things off the bat that I should tell you about survival mode. Now survival mode previously was just a little bit of a drag. However, it has been completely reworked. They've added a ton more building capabilities and they have changed the way that the Jotuns work and they have changed the way that you will go about defending. So first of all, there is no village for you to defend. You will have a tree though and the tree of Yggdrasil is actually super, super important. The game doesn't tell you this, but the Tree of Yggdrasil will heal you for a thousand health per tick. Over the course of 10 to 15 seconds, you will be already back at max healing. Now, you're going to want to stay close to your Tree of Yggdrasil at the start because survival mode is actually pretty tough. So, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to build your All Forge very close to your tree and then build those crafting stations in and around your tree as well. Now, one of the things that I would recommend you do is putting a little wall around those crafting stations so that random enemies don't walk upon them and destroy them. Because even when you leave them, they will actually get attacked, especially if it's nighttime and those health things start to spawn. So you will want to put a little bit of protection around them. Once you have got a couple of crafting stations, you should be able to craft the new weapon, which is a spear. You will only need wood for this. It is really, really simple. So get yourself some tools to start with. The normal way, get yourself some flint, get yourself some branches, get yourself a pickaxe, get yourself a lumber axe, get yourself a spear. Now, there are some big positives with the spear, but there are some downsides to it as well. Now, the spear itself has a decent range, so you can keep enemies at arm's length, but you are unable to block because it is a two-handed weapon. You can put a shield on your back. However, you do not have the capability to block so it is something that you do need to bear in mind if those enemies get up close and personal to you another thing to note as well is all the starter kits that you have in the game only apply to saga mode i would really like them to actually have some customizable specific for survival mode starter kits because it is a little bit tougher and the casual player might get a little bit frustrated at the start of survival mode however i absolutely recommend you go through that pain you learn intuitively and you will, I promise you, you will enjoy survival mode. It is the pinnacle mode now in Tribes for me. So once you have got that spear, you should then be able to go and get some armor. Now the armor station requires yarn, which means you will need to go towards the beach. And those enemies will be a little bit tougher. So you might have to do two or three trips to that beach. Go back to your tree of Yggdrasil and heal. Now if you don't want to keep going back to your tree of Yggdrasil, you will need to make a kind of meal crafting station so that you can use that to heal as well. Plus, there is a new blessing system that will allow you to get multiple different ways to heal. So let's talk about that blessing system now. So there are over 90 blessings in Tribes of Midgard now for survival mode. And this is fantastic because whereas in saga mode, you'll have a specific character like the warrior who has a specific blessing tree. In survival mode, that's completely ripped up. You can mix and match all these different abilities together to make one super class. And this is where I think the longevity and the variation in Tribes of Midgards comes. You can mix the fast attack speed of a Seer with the explosions of a Berserker and then throw your shield around like your Captain America. It, the possibilities are endless and it makes for a ton of fun. I waited a while on my first playthrough to fight the first Jotun and I absolutely decimated that Jotun because I had such a mixture of abilities and there is a ton of ways that you can heal now in those blessings so you just become an absolute monster. Once you've got yourself a few stations and you started to upgrade things you will notice that those stations require a different amount of materials that are a bit, little bit like over here, over there, and much different to what was traditionally in Saga mode, where if you kind of went into one area, you'd very specifically be able to craft one thing. An example of this is the weapon station for tier three, where you'll get 
a couple of traditional materials for stone, rock, and iron, and then you'll need to get gold. Now, gold only spawns in the caves and island beaches, and there are no desert caves in the first biome that you get, meaning that you'll have to travel there. And you'll notice that the boatyard is actually not available unless you defeat that first Jotun. So it kind of leads you into a certain path. And then once you have defeated that first Jotun, it goes, okay, the game's open now, have at it. So you'll need to defeat that first Jotun. So make sure you're absolutely geared, ready to go for that. Once you've got that done, fight the Jotun, get the boatyard, and then off you go. Once you start traversing the world and sailing, there is a risk that you could lose your gear on an island and then not be able to get back to that island. I recommend that the first voyage that you do, you go and find a good bit of mainland, a huge bit of mainland. And then new to Survival 2.0 is you have the ability to craft shrines and you have the ability to craft beds. Now beds serve as a respawn point. So when you die, you can set that as your respawn point. So you don't have to go and travel. Really good for when you're right outside of a Jotun. Or, for example, when you're about to go into a cave, fighting a, an enemy, tough enemy wasps or whatever. But I recommend that you build a shrine on every single mainland. And that way that if you do die, you can just fast travel back to there. Go and pick up your gear and carry on. Another tip that I would like to give you is that in Saga mode, previously what we would need to do is go back to base to actually repair our equipment. Now, we don't have a base. You can build a building, but your base essentially is wherever you put the ore forge. And the ore forge doesn't cost you any material to put down. So find yourself in the middle of a battle and you lose your perfect weapon, the weapon that you absolutely love. Defeat those final enemies, build an ore forge where you stand, and then just repair on the fly for a few souls. It is really, really good. I like that. It keeps the flow of exploration going and it's a really, really good addition to survivor mode. A couple of other side notes just to point out is that the ancient bosses are included in survivor mode and if you do go over and try to kill these bosses you they will drop you unique runes and construction items such as special ships for you to actually use in your survival world as well make sure that you don't sleep on the sorceress the sorceress sells stuff in this mode and it is much more than in the saga modes that includes runes and it also includes some special items that you'll need for construction just remember as well, although that you still are limited to five runes, you can actually keep more runes on you and chop and change those as you go. Another thing you will notice as well is that you do have a bonfire available. Now this becomes now this becomes really important when you are traversing those colder areas and at night time as well. Some of those areas can be very, very cold. So you can use the bonfire and keep going back to it and touching it so that you reset your thermometer you, you don't get too cold. And then you can carry on exploring as you see fit. The idea of survivor mode is that you just do that. You survive. The Jotuns will continually to respawn getting harder and harder each time. So those purest hardcore people out there will want to get every single thing unlocked and defeat every single Jotun on the map a few times in order to get all those valuable materials and to clear the entire map. The maps are much, much bigger in survival 2.0 than they have ever been before so it's going to take some of the most dedicated players to clear the entire survival map overall guys i am thoroughly thoroughly excited about tribes of midgard again i did kind of fall out of love with it with how easy season two was for tribes of midgard but they have absolutely hit the nail on the head with survival 2.0 guys if you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week. And otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip.